Over the last two years, I've purchased dozens of different speculative crypto miners. In this video, I'm going to share exactly how I made $8,401 with those miners in January of 2024. This is a monthly series where I track my income from crypto mining and running crypto nodes, minus my current expenses such as electric and hosting costs, so I can share with you my net income for the month. This month was the most profitable month we've had in the 21 months I've been reviewing this data with you, with one single project contributing to almost half the total revenue for the month. If you've seen any of my recent videos, you can probably guess what project that is. Most of the projects that we'll be reviewing today fall within crypto's DPIN space, which stands for Decentralized Physical Infrastructure Network. It involves using blockchain technology and token incentives to build and maintain physical infrastructure. You can see a lot of familiar names on this chart here, and many of these projects have seen some huge rises in their token prices recently. I think this space will be one of the biggest winners in this bull market, so it's not something you should dismiss. But also, this isn't financial advice. Now stay tuned because I also have a refresh return on investment or ROI analysis for all these miners that I will share with you later in this video. Now this video does take me several hours to put together for you each month, so if you find this video helpful, please hit that like button for me. I appreciate it. And if you want to get into the next projects before they blow up like many have recently, consider subscribing. I'm always looking to bring you reviews of new and exciting projects. Now I have these projects sorted from most to least profitable, and I'll give some high-level commentary over each. We'll start off here at the top. Now my number one project for the month, which many of you probably guessed, were my HiveMapper dash cams, contributing a net $3,865 for the month. Wow. Uh, we did see a huge increase in the Honey Token price this month, up 66%. That's largely due to the Honey Token being listed on Coinbase this month. Uh, this was also the first month where I had uh, both my dash cams up and running for the entire month. So I have a double dash cam set up in my vehicle, so I basically earn double rewards uh, when I drive. I, know I also did drive more this month. If we go to the Honey Calc tab, these are my total rewards by month. Uh, ever since I got the dash cam, you can see this month I've done more than double than any previous month uh, so far. So it's largely due to having the double dash cam, but also me driving more this month. Now, I also did a video last week on how to increase your earnings with your HiveMapper dash cam. I'll link that above and in the description below if you're interested in learning more about HiveMapper. Now, I am filming this video a day earlier this month due to some commitments I have tomorrow. So if you're watching this video on January 31st, uh, today is the last day to buy a dash cam and get a 1000 Honey Token bonus, which basically pays for most of the cost of the dash cam. Uh, the bad part is now you have to wait until July for delivery, but they also have a policy where all orders are fully refundable if you cancel. So if this project happens to crash before then, you could potentially just cancel your order. So it's a very low risk uh, purchase in my opinion. So something to keep in mind if you're in the market for getting into this project. Number two project for the month is a new one, and that's my Solana Saga phone, uh, contributing $677 worth of airdrops for me for the month. If we go over the Solana Saga tab, I did end up paying for this second hand off eBay in early January, I paid $2,200, which I understand is well more than the initial uh, retail cost for this device, but it was sold out and I wanted to uh, get exposure to this. Uh, total value of those airdrops, you can see the listing of the different airdrops that I've re received so far. We have Bonk, Access Protocol, Print Cro Protocol, uh, Win, which was just available last week to all Phantom Wallet users. And then uh, I signed up for Helium Mobile, which I got a for free first 30 days with that uh, with my device. So the total value so far, $677. I uh, anticipate we'll see uh, many more airdrops. Uh, for this phone in the future. We'll track it on here. We'll track the value over time. We'll see if I can make my money back and then some, which I am confident we will be able to do. Coming number three are my Bitcoin miners. I have six of these. These are hosted with BitCap Hosting. I made a net $500 for the month with my Bitcoin miners. Uh, we did see another increase in mining difficulty once again this month, which is been a trend we've seen consistently for years now. And we also need Bitcoin's uh, price to increase substantially by the halving, or I'll have to shut down uh, these Bitcoin miners. I did a calculation of what I need the price to be. So today on January 30th, we're trading at $43,402. Here's the current profitability based on today's price and that eight cent per kilowatt hour electric rate. You're looking at a profit of $2.78 per miner per day. Once we get to the halving in, I believe, April 18th to 20th, around that range, uh, that income amount will be cut in half. So we'll essentially need Bitcoin's price to increase 38% by that date. 
for uh, these miners to essentially be back to break even. Now, this also doesn't account for any mining difficulty increases or any transaction fee changes that could potentially happen between now and then. So I would essentially need Bitcoin's price to be substantially higher than $60,000 by that date uh, for these miners to continue to be profitable. Now, I may run these at slightly unprofitable rate uh, for a few months if it's not quite there at the time of the halving, but we'll have to wait and see. I think long term, we'll see much, much higher prices than those prices. It'll just be interesting to see uh, what happens over the next several months. Number four are my two demo data miners. Both of these are level four devices contributing a net $396 for the month, so about $200 each. If we go to the demo calc tab, I wanna highlight, uh, we did see some pretty substantial decreases in rewards week over week throughout the month. You can see 3%, almost 10%, 9%, 4%. So on average for the month, we're looking at about a 6.3% decrease in uh, earnings week over week. And that's really due to a lot of public onboarding of these devices now that they've become much more profitable. People are trying to get their hands on them. And as they get them, uh, they're growing the number of devices being connected on the network, uh, which should increase the value of the network over time. So the other good part about this is we did see a substantial increase in the demo token price again this month, helping to offset uh, that decrease in the total reward amount. Number five project for the month are my ETCMC NFTs. Uh, I did end up selling seven of my NFTs this month. I had mentioned that in last month's video that I was planning on doing that. I did do that just to capture some value out of these because uh, I believe a lot of these are gonna go down substantially in price over time as the project doesn't look very good at the moment. Uh, number six project for the month are my ETCMC nodes. I have four of these. Uh, once again, we saw a pretty substantial decrease in uh, the ETC POW token price this month down 73%. It's back kind of where it was uh, when I did my initial review of this project. So the good thing with this project is I got uh, a lot of you guys in very early. So hopefully all of you have made all your money back and then some with this project. I found it kind of interesting this month. Uh, they showed off their roadmap and they had Boss Coins uh, review of their uh, ETCMC plug and play miner as part of their roadmap for the month, which I thought was kind of comical. Coming to number seven for the month are my flux nodes. Uh, nothing really happening here uh, for the month. I am waiting on a uh, snapshot clean airdrop, which should be hitting here in the next couple months. So I'll be on the lookout for that. Uh, it should be worth a couple thousand dollars for me. Coming to number eight is my Hyfix GeoNet station. Uh, I did do an update video on this a couple weeks ago uh, where I used a splitter to uh, split off my antenna signal to a new project. Uh, I'll link that video in the description below if you want to check it out. Uh, the interesting thing I found uh, with splitting my signal is I did not see any substantial decrease in earnings due to uh, my signal being uh, split. If we go over to the Geode Calc tab, uh, you can see here are my average rewards per day. Right now, average rewards per day, I'm coming in at 47, just over 47 tokens per day. The max is 48 per day. But historically, I've always been well under the max. I think it has to do with, uh, there's quite a few trees around my house, so I don't have the, I think, the clearest visibility of the sky, which is needed for this project, but not a huge deal for me. Uh, one out of 48, that's like a 2% decrease in uh, rewards versus the max, so not, uh, not a huge deal for me. And number nine for the month is my Helium Bobcat 500. Uh, this is the 5G Helium miner. It earns the mobile token. Uh, the mobile token kind of went back down to earth this month, down 25% for the month, but it was up uh, several thousand percent over the past several months. Contributed $164 for the month, so not too bad for that project. Uh, number 10 are my Fry miners. I have four of these. I have uh, their high-end weather miner, their bandwidth miner, their indoor satellite miner, and then their indoor decibel miner. If we go over to the Fry Calc tab, uh, here are my daily earnings for each of these in terms of Fry tokens. So you're looking at uh, 1,500 Fry tokens per day or about 48,000 uh, Fry tokens per month. Uh, I've ROI'd on all these devices so far, and right now they're still contributing a decent amount every month, about $140 uh, between all four of them. And we also saw a nice increase in the Fry token price this month, up 24% for the month. Number 11 project of the month is Crank. I have two Magix M2 Pros and my two Bobcat Helium Miners uh, fully onboarded with Crank. It generated a total income of $107 for me for the month. Now we did see a pretty substantial decrease in the Crank token this month, down 49%. Uh, they also opened their public onboarding last month, so anyone can now join the project. 
Uh, it is a nice set it up and forget it project for me, which is nice once you have it all set up, you don't really have to worry about it. At least I haven't had any issues so far. They also announced some planned reward reductions that, uh, once they hit some thresholds, which they hit, I believe, at the end of January. So we should see some slight decreases in these rewards going forward. We'll monitor that and I'll give you an update in next month's uh, earnings review video. Number 12 project for the month are my pre-search nodes. I have 40 pre-search nodes. I have 309,000 pre-search tokens uh, spread across those 40 nodes. Generated only $83 for me for the month. I did see a substantial decrease in uh, my pre-search token rewards this month versus December, down 27% for the month. Plus we saw a huge decrease in the pre-search token price this month, uh, down 46%. Uh, the token is back near bear market lows. So it's not looking very good for pre-search at this point. Uh, I do have uh, several of my VPS coming up for renewal here in early February. So I'll have to make the decision whether I should consolidate those and limit my expenses for this project going forward because it's not looking not looking great at the moment. Uh, I'm not ready to sell out of my tokens or anything at this point, but I just want to be wary of how much I'm putting up in terms of capital to keep these uh, nodes up and running if they're not going to be very profitable or if uh, there's some doubt if this project is going to be sustainable long term. Number 13 is my Deeper Connect Mini, making $67 for the month. I do earn max rewards for my device. We saw a pretty substantial decrease in the Deeper token this month, down 48%, but we saw several hundred percent increase in the token price over the last several months. So it's to be expected that we'd see a, a pullback here. Number 14 are my three iPolo G1 Minis. I have these all solo mining grin. This month we found 18 blocks solo mining, which made a net $64 for me for the month. This was actually my first ASIC that I ever Ever bought uh, just over two years ago and it's kind of funny that it's one of the few ASICs I still have on at this point. So a good project for me uh, over the past couple years. Number 15 is my phone farm. I added four new phones this month. Uh, nothing really going on in terms of the various coin token price this month, but contributing a net $60 for the month. It's nice with the software I have running on these. These have basically been a set it and forget it project for me. Every time I go down to the basement, they're all running. I haven't had to mess with a single phone in over a month now, which is a nice uh, thing to see. Uh, anybody who's managed lots of cryptocurrency miners before, no, it can be a pain sometimes uh, managing downtime and uh, troubleshooting miners. So it's been a nice project in terms of phone farming for me. Uh, next is the Step in NFT shoes. This is a walk to earn or move to earn project. I actively sell my tokens right now. I'm making just under $2 a day with my NFT shoes. And number 18 is my streamer node. I have the staked on the streamer network, contributing $19 for the month. Number 18 is Matt Metrics. This is a drive to earn uh, project, make just over $10 for the month. If we go here, you can see this month was the largest month in terms of monthly re rewards I received. That's largely due to me driving more uh, to earn more Hive Mapper rewards. So a double uh, win there in terms of more rewards for the MAP token. Now the MAP token is not really traded on many places at this point. I did find some recent sales prices on uh, this website called Famous Foxes, which is a DEX. So that's where I'm getting uh, this token price. My understanding is the uh, Matt Metrics team is planning on a re release of the token here in the next several months. So hopefully they'll be listed on uh, some other DEXs or maybe an exchange and we can get some uh, trading liquidity and actual good uh, trading prices for this token. Number 19, my Helium Bobcat IoT miners, uh, only making 10 bucks for the month. I have two my hotspot's still down that I need to troubleshoot, but I have not gotten around to doing that. Number 20, Gold Shell Star Coin Box, not much going on there. 21, Exa Miner, still on testnet. Feels like they're gonna be on testnet forever. Uh, it's been a really awful project in terms of profitability compared to the cost for this device. So hopefully something goes on with uh, SE Prime in their Exa Miner, but I uh, won't hold my breath on that one. Uh, number 22, Onacoy, that's a new project uh, that's a uh, GNSS signals. Uh, that's the one I have dual mining with uh, GeoNet. Um, check out that video if you want to learn more about that. I also have a giveaway going on for the next couple days, so you can still enter the chance to win uh, the miner for this project. Uh, 23 wing bits. Uh, I've been in this project since middle of last summer. I was one of the very early uh, people into this project. This project is still very new. It has to do with flight tracking. Uh, they have onboarded a lot more people now. Uh, there's still no tokenomics or really uh, 
revenue structure uh, anticipated for this project yet. So it'll be interesting to see where this project goes, but I'll be watching it. And uh, the good thing is it was very low cost to get in. So it may be fun uh, for you to join in if you're interested in flight tracking. All right, number 24, WeatherXM, also still on testnet. They did announce they're planning to launch their token in late February. So I'll probably do a video on that once that goes live. Number 25, PiFi, also testnet. They also announced their token launch, which will be at the end of March. So we'll plan on doing a video on that. So I'll give you guys an update once that goes live. 26, Modus Mini, once again, testnet. Uh, they're planning on a token launch in Q1 or Q2 of this year. I know several of you have asked for a video reviewing Modus Mini and SourChain, so I'll probably do that. Maybe I'll do that next week for you guys. Um, let me know if you're interested in that, and I can put something together uh, on Modus Mini. And then finally, we have my future bit Apollo Bitcoin Miner that runs unprofitable, but I run it as a full Bitcoin node to support the Bitcoin network. Next, let's go through our ROI analysis. Let's start off the assumptions I'm making so we can level set. Uh, first, minor fair market value estimates are based on recent comparable miner sales that I found from eBay, or if the cost of the miner was lower on the miner's website, I took that price. These are not my purchase costs. In almost all cases, I paid way more for, for a lot of my miners than you can currently buy them for today. Uh, next, current month net income is my actual mining results less my expenses. Your numbers may be different. Uh, this is also as a point in time. As I'm filming this on January 30th, 2024, minor value and income amounts will obviously vary over time. And then finally, this is not financial advice. Don't use this as justification to purchase a miner or a note. So I have these ranked from uh, the lowest break-even days to the highest. And then I have a color coding system here in column B. So green is what I would consider top tier and most lucrative projects. Uh, yellow is kind of middle of the road, kind of iffy, and then red are some of the projects that at this point I would stay away from. Either they're not sustainable or uh, just the profitability is falling off on those projects. So we'll start off here at the top and I'll get some high level commentary over a lot of these uh, more lucrative projects. So number one, like I mentioned earlier, obviously is Hide Mapper with a current break even of only four days. Now this is a drive to earn, it's location dependent, and it's really dependent on how much you drive is how much you're gonna earn. Now the unfortunate thing is right now it's July delivery uh, for their dash cam, but if you order this device, essentially today, because this video will be coming out on January 31st, you'll be eligible to them for that 1,000 Honey Token bonus, which should basically take about $200 off uh, this purchase cost. So even if you don't drive very much, it may make sense uh, to pick one of these up just because you'll be able to make back your costs uh, relatively quickly. And it's nice they have a return policy so you can watch this project till July. And if uh, the project falls apart or something like that, which I don't anticipate happening, uh, you could always uh, cast your order and get your money back. So number two is obviously the Demo Data Miner. This is these I think have been the top two projects for months and months now, and I've been raving about both of them ever since we got into them. Uh, so these are my level four earnings for the earnings here. So when you get to your device, it's obviously gonna be a little bit lower than what my earnings amount. So the break even will be a little higher. And then unfortunately for Demo now, uh, delivery has started to be pushed out as this has become more popular for people. So you're looking at eight to 12 weeks for delivery for Demo, which isn't too bad. I know my little brother bought one back in December and he was able to get his only within a couple weeks. So he really shows how much uh, deliveries kind of uh, been pushed back as uh, this has become more profitable. Number three, the Solana Saga phone. Now this ROI here of 111 days is obviously distorted because I've front loaded a lot of the airdrops here. So I wouldn't anticipate getting this amount of airdrops every month going forward. So I would expect the ROI to probably be a little longer than this on 111 days. I have this marked as yellow because the cost is quite high. So this is definitely not for everyone. I wouldn't recommend everyone go pay up for these on eBay. That's just a decision I wanted to do just because I think uh, Solana and the Solana ecosystem plays are going to be some of the biggest winners in this bull market. So I want to get some more exposure and a great way to do that is with this phone. Number four, the Hyfix GeoNet station. Uh, this is the triple band. They've also pushed back delivery on this. So now you're looking at a March delivery if you purchase one today. Really quick break even time though, 124 days. This has been a great uh, project for me over the past year and a half to two years. Uh, with my space weather station on my roof. Number five, the Fry Miners. Uh, 
The good thing with this is the token price has held pretty steady over the past several months. Uh, these have been really good uh, set it and forget it uh, devices, really nice for people who may be new to cryptocurrency mining. They have this listed as green, but I've also heard some horror stories from some people about uh, poor customer service and not being able to resolve issues with their devices. So just keep that in mind. If you want to jump into this project, is there are other people that have had issues, but I've found any issues I've had, I've been able to resolve either by looking at their Discord and uh, problem solving that way. The good thing with the Fry Miners is the cost is quite low, coming in at about $200 per device. So it could be uh, more lucrative for somebody if uh, price, if you're much more price conscious uh, versus a lot of these other more expensive miners. Number six, ETCMC nodes. I personally would stick away from this project at this point. Uh, I think uh, the selling pressure that you're gonna be seeing on this uh, token over time with all these people cashing on their nodes, uh, I would stay away at this point. Uh, number seven, Deeper Connect Mini. Uh, I have a substantial amount of Deeper token stakes so that's contributing to my higher earnings than you would receive if you did not stake any tokens. So keep that in mind if you're looking to get into uh, a deep, deeper Connect Mini uh, VPN device. Uh, number eight, step in NFT shoes, uh, move to earn. This project really is not sustainable. I would stay away from step in unless you really enjoy walking. You get much more out of walking than making money uh, with this project, obviously. Uh, number nine, Helium Bobcat 500. If you can find a good location, this might be a good project, but it is quite pricey to get one of these devices. You're looking at about $1,500. So a pretty, uh, expensive price point at this point. Uh, number 10, Map Metrics. I have this one as yellow just because the cost is quite low. It is kind of annoying. You have to open up their app every time uh, you want to log it uh, when you start driving. That is one annoying part of this device, but it has been a pretty easy project for me at this point. Number 11, Crank. Now the ROI time is obviously a little lower here and it I did anticipate it could get even lower uh, as the rewards start to decrease as the project ramps up. But I've been very impressed with Crank so far. If you have extra IoT or Helium devices you want to onboard with Crank, uh, there's tutorials out there and guides on their website. I've been very impressed with their team uh, so far. So I think it's a project that's still very potentially lucrative uh, as we enter this bull market. Uh, number 12, the iPolo G1 Mini. Uh, the ROI time is uh, getting a little long here in terms of break even. You're looking at over a year, but this has also been a great device for me, so I can't complain about that. Uh, number 13 are my Bitcoin miners. Uh, as we were approaching the halving, uh, we're going to need some substantial increase in Bitcoin price, like we mentioned earlier, uh, to keep these profitable. So I have these marked as yellow at this point. Uh, ETCMC NFTs, I would stay away from these NFTs at this point. Next, we have the phone farm. I think if you have some used phones, it could be a fun way to get into cryptocurrency mining at a low cost. So something to explore if you've got some old Android phones laying around. Next, Helium Bobcat IoT. Uh, the IoT token has done much better over the past couple months, helping to increase profitability here. If you can find a good location, it may be something lucrative, especially if you already have a Helium device or if you can pick one up cheap online. And finally, these last couple projects, these nodes, these ROIs are obviously going to be distorted for pre-search, streamer, and flux nodes here because you're really staking these tokens to earn a yield and you're not losing these tokens when you create these nodes. At any time, you can shut down the node and get all your tokens back. So, you know, just because there's only a 27% you know, ROI on pre-search nodes, uh, that's really just your uh, interest yield on your stake tokens. And then finally, we have our testnet projects, which a lot of times can be very lucrative if you can get in too early because then you get an airdrop uh, when the token goes live, which obviously we've got a lot of projects going live here in the next couple months. Now, I have discounts for a lot of these miners. I'll put them in the description below. If you choose to use them, uh, it really does help to support the channel. So I appreciate that very much. If there's any projects I'm missing here that you think I should get in, uh, let me know that as well in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye.